This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, sci-fi, thriller film called Doomsday. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In April 2008, the Reaper virus rapidly spread throughout Glasgow and killed thousands within the first week. The United Kingdom immediately implemented martial law and closed the borders to quell the outbreak. People were ordered to stay in their homes, but many went to the border in the hopes of escaping the quarantine imposed on Scotland. When the military found an infected man in the crowd, they shot him down, spraying his blood onto other people. The crowd became enraged and fought back against the soldiers. In response, the military indiscriminately fired their guns at the crowd. The soldiers soon headed toward the border before it closed. The crowd chased after them, but the gates were shut before the civilians could get in. Not far from the border, Catherine Sinclair sees a few soldiers boarding a helicopter, so she runs towards them and begs them to take her daughter, Eden. She hands them a piece of paper with their address so the child would know where to look for her. Scotland was isolated from the rest of Britain after the borders were closed. Those who remained within the quarantine zone were left to die, so they had no choice but to feed on rats, dogs, and eventually, each other. Soon, the lights within the quarantine zone went out, indicating that everyone inside had perished. Britain was eventually plunged into poverty after other governments treated it the same way it treated Scotland. 27 years later, Major Eden Sinclair, leads a raid on a ship owned by a slave trader named Richter. Sinclair and John Michelson sneak their way into the ship and split up as Richter conducts a deal with an interested party. A shootout ensues when a member of Richter's staff spots Michelson. Suspecting a setup, Richter and his henchwoman kill the buyers. Michelson shoots the henchwoman as she flees with the buyer's gold. Richter suddenly emerges and captures him, so Michelson has no choice but to drop his gun. Around the corner, Sinclair hears Richter's voice, so she throws her synthetic eye on the corridor to assess the situation from the monitor on her wristwatch. Soon, Sinclair comes out pointing a gun at Richter while slowly approaching them. Richter threatens to shoot Michelson and tells her to get back, but Sinclair continues walking. As Richter backs away, he accidentally shoots Michelson, so Sinclair kills him. Later, Domestic Security Chief Bill Nelson approaches Sinclair as she looks at the note that her mother left her 27 years ago. After she inserts her synthetic eye in her eye socket, Nelson asks what happened to Michelson, so she takes out a disc from her wristwatch and hints that he'll see it in the recording. When Nelson inspects her mother's note, Sinclair laments that she no longer remembers what her mother looks like, and she can't ever go to the address on the paper. Nelson warns her that she'll end up ruining her life if she works too hard, so he advises her to get some rest. The following day, the police conduct a routine drug raid in an abandoned building, but they're alarmed when they find a room full of people covered in sores and lesions. Later that day, Michael Canaris, a senior government official, informs Prime Minister John Hatcher that the Reaper virus is spreading in London. Hatcher soon calls for a briefing to develop a plan to contain the disease. Jane Harris recommends putting London under lockdown. Hatcher agrees, but Nelson warns him that there will be chaos once the people see the bodies of the infected piling up on the streets. After the meeting, Canaris shows Nelson a three-year-old satellite photo showing people in the streets of Glasgow. Canaris surmises that those people must have survived because they found a cure to the Reaper virus. Canaris asks Nelson to find someone to lead a team of operatives tasked with retrieving the cure. Soon, Nelson takes Sinclair to meet with Canaris. Before Nelson leaves, Sinclair gives him her mother's note and asks him to look after it. Canaris instructs Sinclair to find the lab of Dr. Marcus Kane, who is the leading researcher on the virus when Scotland was put under quarantine. Sinclair and her team will only have 46 hours to retrieve the cure, because London will be left to die if she doesn't make it back in time. London's residents start to panic after Hatcher declares martial law. When Hatcher asks Canaris for advice, Canaris suggests leaving the people to die, because there's a high chance that the infection will re-emerge if they save a large number of people. Sinclair soon arrives at the border and meets the team consisting of riflemen, tank drivers, and two doctors. Not long after, the operatives leave the border on the two armored personnel carriers. Moments after they enter Glasgow, Chandler, one of the drivers hits an animal on the road. When they light up a flare to investigate, they discover hundreds of cows feeding on the grass. As they continue their journey, Dr. Talbot, plays a recording of Kane when he was reporting to the government about their situation during the quarantine. Sinclair learns from the files that Kane and a few soldiers hold up at a hospital and regularly reported to the government until the power went out. In the recording, Kane notes that people started feeding on each other when they ran out of food. He feared that they would soon die because their barricades wouldn't last long. Upon reaching the hospital, the operatives accompany the doctor to look for evidence of Kane's work in the abandoned building while the drivers wait outside. Suddenly, Chandler sees a girl outside his 
vehicle, Sinclair tells him not to approach the girl because she might be infected, but he thinks that she needs help, so he puts on a protective suit and goes outside. The girl collapses in his arms, so Talbot instructs him to isolate her so that they can examine her. Suddenly, a group of marauders attacks the team, so they tell the drivers to prepare to evacuate. Chandler takes the girl inside the APC and puts her inside the isolation unit before starting the vehicle. The team manages to kill some of the marauders as they find a way out of the building, but more of them emerge. Outside, the marauders throw a lot of cocktail bombs at the APCs as they drive around the block to pick up their teammates. As Chandler tries to evade the marauders, the girl gets out of the isolation unit and slits his throat. The vehicle crashes into the building and Chandler dies, but not before releasing a hand grenade that explodes in front of the girl. Back in the hospital, Sinclair instructs the team to get inside the elevator to evade the marauders. Once inside, Sinclair shoots the elevator cable and tells the rifleman to activate the foam grenade to protect them from impact as the lift falls to the ground floor. Corporal Reed. The other driver heads to the hospital's garage to fetch the team. Not long after, the team arrives and boards the APC while firing at the marauders chasing after them. As they flee, a marauder with a crossbow shoots an arrow towards the APC and hits Reed's throat. With no driver at the wheel, the vehicle slams into a car and tips over. The group soon leaves the vehicle and finds more marauders running towards them. Sinclair and Miller provide cover while Sterling treats Talbot's wound. After wrapping the wound with a bandage, Sinclair runs to the alleyway to join Sergeant Norton. Miller's gun jams, so he tries to engage the marauders in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they soon overwhelm him. Sterling eventually runs out of ammo, so she's left with no option but to surrender. Sterling and Norton flee through the alleys as the marauders surround Sinclair and Talbot. The marauders bring Sinclair to a cell where she's beaten and interrogated by their psychopathic leader, Saul. When Saul asks him where they came from, Sinclair confesses that they come from the wall. Saul exclaims that he knew that Cain was lying when he told him that there's nothing beyond the wall. He surmises that Sinclair plans on returning to the other side, so Saul demands to cross the border with her. Before leaving the cell, Saul instructs his men to keep Sinclair alive. Viper then taunts Sinclair by crushing her GPS locator with her boots. That night, Saul gathers the marauders in the arena to celebrate their catch. After Saul throws some plates at the crowd, they burn Talbot alive and feast on his remains. Meanwhile, Sinclair removes the wire from the broken GPS and uses it to uncuff herself. Soon, a guard arrives and offers her a piece of Talbot's remains. Sinclair pretends to ask him for a drink, but when he goes near the door, she pulls on the chain connected to his nose ring and forces him to unlock the door. After Sinclair kills the guards, Callie, a prisoner in the next cell, discloses that Kane is her father, and she can help her find him if she releases her. Before Sinclair could unlock her cell, Viper comes charging towards her armed with two swords, but Sinclair dodges the attack. In the scuffle, Sinclair manages to grab one of Viper's swords. The two women try to slice each other until Callie catches Viper by the hair. While Callie holds on to her, Sinclair takes the opportunity to cut off Viper's hand and decapitate her. While escaping from the compound with Callie, Sinclair contacts Norton and tells him to meet at the train station on Queen Street. As soon as Norton and Sterling emerge from hiding, marauders on motorcycles and a bus chase after them. The two immediately run to the station where Sinclair, Callie, and her friend Joshua are waiting on a train. Joshua starts the train before Norton and Sterling can board, so they have to run after her while evading the marauders. After Norton gets on the train, Sinclair decides to help Sterling, so she gets off the train to knock down a marauder on her motorcycle. Sterling and Sinclair both manage to get on the train with Norton's help. Later, Callie notes that she can only point them in Kane's direction, but she won't go with them because he'll kill her. Kane has become paranoid since her brother Saul left and started a war with their father. After getting off the train, Callie leads them to an abandoned military facility that she uses as a shortcut through the mountains. When they reach the other side, they encounter Kane's executioner, Telamon. Sinclair realizes that getting captured by Telamon would be the fastest way to reach Kane, so she and Norton surrender to him while Joshua, Sterling, and Callie escape. However, other men on horseback arrive to capture Sterling and Callie after killing Joshua. Telamon and his men take the captives to a medieval castle, where Kane awaits. Kane notes that they tried to stay hidden for as long as they could, but he realizes that it's only a matter of time before someone comes to ask why they're still alive. Kane reveals that there is no cure, but they survived because they were immune. As the authorities struggle to deal with the riots in London, an infected man broke into the British security headquarters. The man attempted to kill Hatcher, but Nelson manages to shoot him. However, Hatcher realizes that he's infected when he notices that the man's blood is sprayed onto his face. When Canaris forces Hatcher to isolate himself in his room, he decides to blow his own head off. 
The next day, Kane forces Sinclair to fight with Telamon in a pit. Sinclair is unarmed while Telamon wears full body armor with a shield and a spear, so all she can do is kick him while evading his attacks. Meanwhile, Norton, Sterling, and Callie escape from their cell after overpowering their guards. The trio heads to the armory to take some explosives and weapons. In the pit, Sinclair manages to grab a weapon from a guard on the balcony. After she knocks Telamon down, the man gets up and tries to attack her while her back is turned to him. However, she quickly turns around and plunges the axe through his helmet. Kane orders his men to execute the prisoners, but Norn and Sterling detonate the explosives to provide a distraction while they escape. Kane orders an archer to kill Sinclair, but Norton shoots the archer with his gun. The group flees from the castle on horseback and heads to the military facility as Kane's knights pursue them. In the facility, the group finds a Bentley inside a crate while looking for something to aid them in their escape. As Sterling fills up the vehicle with fuel, Sinclair finds a phone. As soon as they get the car in front of the gate, Norton pushes a button to close it to prevent the knights from following them after they exit the tunnel. As he runs to the Bentley, the knights arrive and shoot Norton with arrows before he can reach the car. Norton doesn't survive, so Sinclair drives the car through the gates before they close. On the road, Sinclair calls Nelson and informs him that they've retrieved the package. When Nelson passes the phone to Canaris, Sinclair instructs him to trace their location through the phone signal. As they make their way to the border, a marauder in a police car chases after them. While evading the car, a motorcycle emerges in front of them and smashes their windshield. Sinclair turns around and shoots the police car's tires. The police car falls off a cliff, but more marauders arrive with Saul leading them. Sinclair reverses the Bentley and drives straight toward the marauder convoy, so they have no choice but to avoid her. The chase continues after Sinclair turns around and heads towards the border. Not long after, Saul catches up to them and jumps into their car. Sinclair and Sterling struggle to take control of the wheel as they fight against Saul. When another marauder tries to get in, Sterling opens a door hoping that he'd fall, but the man hangs on tight. Sinclair tries to shoot Saul, but Saul grabs the gun. As they fight for it, the weapon fires and the bullet hits a marauder on a motorcycle. Moments later, the marauder hanging on the door slams into an abandoned vehicle and gets hit by another car chasing the Bentley. Sinclair eventually pushes Saul out of the window, but he manages to hang on to the back of the car. Saul then gets on top of the vehicle and tries strangling Sinclair as she drives. As they continue to head towards the border, marauders on a bus block their way and shoot buzzsaw blades towards them. Sinclair is undaunted and continues driving at full speed, so the marauders quickly jump off the bus. Saul is beheaded when the Bentley crashes into the bus, but the occupants are unharmed. As they get close to the border, a helicopter lands on the road. Canaris immediately gets off the aircraft and asks Sinclair for the cure, so she tells Sterling to take Callie out of the Bentley. Sterling is reluctant, so Sinclair apologizes to Canaris for Sterling's behavior and tells Canaris that she understands the need for sacrifice. Canaris remarks that the government will be in better shape the longer they allow the virus to spread. He notes that they will only make a move once the virus has killed everyone infected. Sinclair deduces that it will make Canaris a hero when he emerges with the cure. Sterling notes that they can use Callie's blood to make a vaccine, but he doesn't want to surrender her to Canaris. Sinclair, however, urges him to go with Canaris to London because she has no leverage against him. After they leave, Sinclair drives back to Glasgow. Nelson finds her in the address written on her mother's note. He hands a note back to her, but Sinclair Claire points out that she doesn't need it anymore because she now has a picture of her mother. She then hands Nelson a recording and tells him that it has all the evidence needed to bring Canaris down. Soon after Nelson returns to London, the press gets a hold of the recording where Canaris told Sinclair about his plans to wait until the virus kills all the infected people. Sinclair soon returns to Marauder territory to bring them Saul's head. The Marauders stand in silence after she throws the head on the ground, but they soon break into wild cheering, knowing that they have found a new leader. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.